Hi, I'm here today with uh, George Rumeliotis, who is now with uh, Walmart Labs. Welcome, George. Thank you. So, George, I think you've made the claim that 80% uh, plus of data science initiatives within companies fail. Uh, why do you think that is? I think it's actually much more than that. <laughs> but you know, just to make ourselves feel good, I, let's let's say let's say 80%. Um, you know, I think fundamentally. It's because data scientists tend not to understand all of the problem, right? They, um, they might uh, zero in on, on some algorithm, you know, some input-output component that they need to build. But the, the real problem, right, the, uh, the, to create a solution, you have to uh, understand the full end-to-end -end processes, right? The, the value chain, as you guys say. Uh, and you also have to understand the human uh, dynamics, right? And so I think they they uh, they fail part of that. The simple the simple way I like to put it too is that they they fail because um, a lot of data scientists uh, want to create something and then do a big tada, right, to the rest of the organization. And uh, as I was saying in this in this talk. That's just like bringing foreign DNA into an organism, right? It's going to be rejected. Uh, and so I've been s spending a lot of time thinking about and honing uh, approaches, more systematic approaches, uh, to get over that. You know, what, what do you do about that um, immune response of organizations to new ideas? All right, so in order to get buy-in for some kind of initiative like this, it doesn't matter how impressive the results are, it doesn't matter how effective the algorithm is, uh, you need to have allies uh, within the organization um, because you're going to disrupt something and there's going to be, uh, this, as you call it, an immune reaction. Right. So how then do you get through the immune system and find allies within the organization to help uh, make a bigger impact? Uh, I, you know, I like to think of it as that your, your job as a data scientist, even though you might not like it, right? is to take my idea, you know, take, go from my idea to our idea, right? And to uh, uh, give everybody the sense that they participated. I'm, I'm sure you've heard that, that apocryphal story about Betty Crocker cake mixes and that um, uh, the company who made them didn't really need to put, uh, you know, didn't really need to put fresh eggs in there, but the act of contributing uh, makes you feel better. So that's, that's apocryphal. But uh, I think data scientists, to just increase their chances of success, and need to reach out across organizational boundaries. They proactively need to reach out across organizational boundaries. Uh, they know, need to show interest in the, um, in the problems and the headaches of the, the stakeholders. Uh, and I think they need to do, the, do that proactively. Now you've called this sort of a design thinking approach. Uh, you know, what is it about the design thinking approach that, that, that helps uh, data scientists to frame and solve the problems? Yeah, and design thinking, I think it's a, maybe an inadequate term, because the first thing people think about is, you know, pretty, um, you know, pretty mobile phones and, and, uh, and nice interfaces. Maybe a better term is co-design, right? Co-designing solutions. Uh, and there, the, um, the data scientists can play a very important role in being the, the catalyst and facilitator. And so I would say uh, some of the aspects of that are developing deep customer empathy, right? By going out and almost becoming a cultural anthropologist, right? Really understanding uh, a day in the life of the people you're solving for, uh, why they get yelled at, you know, what their hopes and dreams are, seriously, at that level. Uh, that's one thing. Um, convening brainstorming sessions, you know, so that uh, your key stakeholders and even uh, ones that you might not think about initially, right? Uh, DevOps, for example, bring bring representatives from uh, all your stakeholders uh, into these brainstorming sessions. Uh, with, I found that uh, some of the best ideas come from those surprising uh, sources. Um, so again, again. Part of the, the result, the reason you do brainstorming and the outcome is that you're going from, it helps to go from that my idea to our idea. Yeah, now what's the, what's the role of experimentation all, all this? I mean, it's one thing to kind of listen to the customer and observe what the customer has been doing, and then it's another thing to actually 
uh, make an intervention and sort of see what feedback you can get from that intervention. Right. I think it's very important uh, uh, not to pour cement too, too early in, uh, in these data science projects or really any other kind of project. So uh, what I've found helpful in the past is to uh, frame ideas in terms of hypotheses, right? Here's my guess at what, what's going to happen, but I do X that Y will happen. What are the, but what are the, um, uh, the key assumptions underlying that, right? And what really simple things can I do? What's the simplest thing I can do to test some of those assumptions, right? Before I start pouring cement by putting, you know, emotional and intellectual energy into what I think is a perfect solution. So um, I think experimentation is uh, very important. And to me, experimentation is just another facet of humble humility, mm -hmm. right? That you, you don't know the answer, right? You need to go and uh, engage the world to help you figure it out. George, thanks for talking today. You're very welcome.